going to close the public testimony. I'm going to bring it back to our board and just say that I think probably one of the biggest benefits of having this hearing today and allowing the time for the public to speak is the public has a venue to speak. Because I think there's been a lot of pent up um, uh, anxiety, concern, and feeling unheard. And this has certainly uh, been a forum where we've heard a lot from you. And I would like to ask my uh, colleagues on the board if they would have any comments. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, I too would like to thank all of you for coming today to come and speak for us. It truly adds strength to whatever actions we take today to have the support from the community that, that has been shown. Uh, and it's important. And I certainly will uh, be voting in uh, uh, approval of this moratorium as a strong statement of individual choice, as well as the precautionary principles. Um, it's really not a matter of whether we have jurisdiction and authority at this point. It's a matter of making a clear and unequivocal statement of what we think is not working. And uh, this ordinance is a good uh, statement in that direction. It isn't going to solve the problem on its own, and I, I've said that to others uh, along the way, and I think that there will be actions that our board needs to take above and beyond this, but this is an important next step. Um, we need to take action at the federal, state, and local level. Yeah. And in that regard, I think that uh, we do have full appreciation to our assembly member, assembly member Huffman, for his AB 37, which uh, does uh, provide an opt-out opportunity. It also, uh, I did check with our county council during the course of this, uh, it also includes a de-installation requirement. I will be open to the consideration of modification of the moratorium. Uh, I'm less convinced that, that we can take a moratorium action that, is, uh, that, that uh, involves activities that preceded the moratorium itself, but I certainly support that and absolutely will work to the, uh, provide the opportunity for de-installation, um, uh, whether it comes through the AB 37 or through uh, other actions that we might take. Um, I also think that it will address the issues that Mary Weber brought up about those who have solar systems and are therefore temporarily uh, protected because of the technology challenges in those types of systems. Um, I think that, you know, the smart grid and demand management uh, are important uh, as a part of our energy future. I said my comments early today about our climate change future. We do need to reduce our energy consumption. And the, the intention of the smart grid is to give us the tools to manage that. Uh, and I, I do not oppose that in any way, but I think that what we're talking about here is a technology issue, uh, not a demand management issue. Um, also, should our board uh, approve this moratorium ordinance today, I will be making a, a motion subsequent to that uh, at, at today's hearing that we also authorize sending letters to um, the FCC to the California Public Utility Commission, which I might add on two occasions has not even had the courtesy to respond uh, to our letters requesting a moratorium. So this will be our third letter. Uh, but I, I think we need to go beyond that. I think we need to send a letter to Governor Brown and strongly urge his appointment of, of public utility commissioners who will respect the concerns of the community they represent. I think that, that also the point about uh, notifying the local jurisdictions as well and encouraging them to reconsider in the case of San Anselmo and to consider in the case of other communities as a good idea, as well as uh, the other public utilities that operate in this area. Um, there are a number of folks that need to be uh, attending to this matter in the same manner that our board is today. And with your support, I believe we can go further along. Uh, I will just close by thanking David Zaltzman, who responded to our board's request uh, over a holiday period that was uh, filled with many other distractions. And uh, it's, it's gratifying that his work has received your public support. Thank you. Thank you.
I just also want to mention that how deeply sorry I am about the way PG&E has behaved in our county. Um, this is a company that vigorously supported an opt-out provision for community choice aggregation. They took full advantage of the opt-out period last spring and summer to pound us uh, when we were trying to implement marine clean energy. And then ironically, when the PUC was considering the smart meter deployment, there's actually excellent evidence that they were opposed to an opt-out provision in those proceedings when the smart meters were authorized. So, you know, it's just more of this sort of two-handed, hypocritical behavior that we see when people are seeking to maximize profit instead of uh, benefiting the public. Uh, and it's heartbreaking. Um, as one of the speakers mentioned, that utilities 100 years ago were authorized to enjoy monopoly franchises because there was a serious public benefit seen uh, in granting those franchises. And over time, the very value of having a monopoly increasingly eludes me. Um, from Hinkley to the Marine Clean Energy Program to San Bruno, I'm just sort of increasingly repulsed by what happens when well-meaning people get infected with the mandate to maximize profit at the expense of everything else. And I'm really sorry about that. I also agree that we need to communicate with our governor about the need for commissioners to the Public Utilities Commission. Um, I think there is a fabulous candidate, uh, John Geesman, who is uh, submitting his interest to the governor. I also intend to submit my own interest to the governor. PUC <laughs> regulates a lot of things, from railroads to monopoly electric utilities. And so I think it's important for all of us to tell our governor how serious we think those commissioner appointments are. Uh, it's really urgent that we start to move the energy future of California into one that protects the people and provides safe and clean energy at every step of the way. So, last thing I just want to say is how deeply grateful I am to the citizens of Marin. This has been an educational process for all four of us over the course of the summer, fall, and now winter. You guys have consistently come back and you've reminded us what our obligation is to protect the health and safety of the people, and I frankly have had my eyes widened in their open view of the role that you guys play with us in making sure we walk our talk, and I thank you. Um, this action that we're taking today, and one that I support, is a political action. And don't be deceived that political actions don't work. Think about the American Revolution. So really, this is beginning. I wanted to to uh, say that I also spoke with uh, Senator, H I mean Assemblyman Huffman's office this morning. His bill does not allow for opt out. They said it allows for a swap, so that if you have a wireless meter and his bill passes, you can request that it be switched to a wired meter. So in a sense, it's opt out, but that's what that's what the bill says. Um, you know, David, I just want to add my voice. I am especially delighted in two statements that you have in the ordinance. One says that, indeed, the fact that the CPUC has not established safeguards for privacy in its regulatory approvals may violate the principles set forth by the U.S. Supreme Court. And the other one, which says, further, some engineers and energy conservation experts believe that the smart meters program in totality could well actually increase total electricity consumption yes. and therefore the carbon footprint. Right. Wow. So, uh, great job. Really, today, what we've seen is that this is democracy in action. This is very American. And I just hope we don't have to go so far as Thomas Jefferson when he said that every so often the tree of liberty has to be watered by the blood of patriots. So, Tom. Um, also, I've given the uh, county's information, my office information, to the electrician, and I'll make that available to all my colleagues today for the installation. Thank you.
first of all, do you have any responses to the issues that were raised about the installation or enforcement at this point? Certainly, at the board's direction, we can look at further steps that might be possible to report back to the board at a future time. Um, but I think, as one of the gentlemen put it, um, you know, we might as well move forward with what we've got and seek improvements later. Okay. I also want to thank you, David, for working with me over the holidays to craft this. We had a few back and forth uh, revisions before. Pardon? Yep, for working with, with uh, the, the board over this. Um, we have, um, uh, you know, I, I think the, the statements that were made raising all of the concerns that we've heard from the public makes us a really powerful um, statement of our board's commitment to. Um, really doing what we can to protect our public interests that we represent. And uh, I know it was no easy uh, task to have to forego holiday time to do this, but I, it's, again, heard from all four of us. We greatly appreciate it. Um, with, with that, I would like to um, see if, if somebody would make a motion on why we have to pass um, this. Okay. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Any further board discussion? Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes you. Know. And you know what? I think it's going to go back all the way across the country now. It's going to ricochet right back this energy here. It's going to be helping people all the way across who've been asleep to the issue. That's my comment. I had a conversation yesterday with a guy who writes for the Chronicle. I think his name is David Baker, perhaps. And he was talking about how various utility companies are looking at PG&E and the troubles they've had in this rollout in terms of their adaptability or lack of adaptability and lack of concern about their customers' uh, concerns. So for, for me today, this is really uh, a celebration, although it's not, you know, like the Civil Rights Movement, a long way done, a long way to go. It's a little bit like that here today, like that it was a great thing to inspire, the board, inspire insist, encourage that the Board of Supervisors pass this ordinance and they weren't going to do it months ago, but I think as a result of people's hard work, we've been able to influence them. So I think that's a great thing and a great day for democracy. Gratifying to see that um, citizen action can still make a difference. No, it's true. It is true. This is really an important day here. Um, this is an example of a local government understanding that they have a responsibility to protect the welfare um, of, their own, of their own residents, welfare of their own environment and to stand up to corporate bullies, if you will, and they get it, they're on it. It's very exciting, it's very gratifying to live here. This is just particularly well drafted. It's a sequence of whereases that just, uh, as one follows another, um, one's response is to go, yeah, and yeah, yeah, and it's just beautifully done. It started in Fairfax. Um... As many as many uh, uh, good good measures and and good initiatives start in Fairfax, California. I, I've served seven terms as mayor of Fairfax, and I've been involved in a number of these initiatives, uh, from from uh, uh, pesticide laws to uh, water conservation laws to uh, uh, the smart meter law. Back in June, uh, during the, it was during the Fairfax Festival that I had spent a couple of days working on the ordinance for Fairfax, drafting a model ordinance for the the town of Fairfax and uh, distributed it over the festival weekend. That's back in June, like the, the first weekend in June. So we've come a long way in six months. Um, the county of Marin has now adopted a, an ordinance. It's similar to Fairfax's. And uh, what it shows is this movement has laid. This movement is huge. It's tremendous. And any politician that underestimates the power of people, this people movement is, is I think, is uh, making a big mistake. This is way beyond a few disgruntled Fairfaxans complaining about a smart meter. This is a, this is a huge movement uh, going on all over the state. And, uh, and I'm proud to say Fairfax, you know, it started in Fairfax. We have to appreciate the irony that uh, the only woman any of the hundreds of us who've met who's had her smart meter deinstalled, actually swapped out to an old analog meter, 
is one who had uh, a host of electrical problems. So clearly, if your washing machine is feeling headachey and having palpitations, or if your uh, router is a bit fatigued, then you can get your meter deinstalled. But if you're feeling any physical symptoms, put a sock in it. So, what was your feeling when they said, you know, unanimous moratorium effective immediately in the red county? I feel great about it. I'm so happy. I mean, it's taken a lot of work, and I know that the supervisors have been looking into this for a while, and I think they've realized now through their constituency that we're not only are we going to show up at their meetings and push them, but we're also going to get into the streets and, and do civil disobedience, which we've been doing mothers and, and grandmothers have been doing civil disobedience. It's, it's really interesting. I feel great. I feel like some, you know, a lot of work has come to fruition, and um, you know, we finally have the county now um, behind us, and I'm really, really grateful to all our um, county officials, and I feel like they really have been trying to help us, and it's just been a matter of feeling confident enough to declare jurisdiction over a neutered CPUC and a um, uncaring PG&E and saying, no, it's enough. And, and I think also the civil disobedience um, probably played a part in it because they saw people getting into the streets and being willing to be arrested and all over the place, and it just wasn't going to go on like this. So, But, you know, if PG&E doesn't respect our ordinance, we're going to have to continue the civil disobedience and arrests.